When I need some good kosher food, there's only three words I need to know. Feed. Me. Bobby. my family really fell in love with. Pickled salmon. And it can be served parrot, you know, plain, or add sour cream to a witch's dairy, and it's delicious. It's served as an appetizer, or if you're having a brunch, it's, it's wonderful. It's a conversation piece. The best part, it tastes good. Zadie and I spent, and the children, spent many summers at the Catskill Resorts, that's in Upper State, New York. And it's too bad in a way that like time has taken its toll up there. A wonderful area, beautiful vacations, and the food, as much as you wanted and no limits. Well, a couple of years ago we went up and we stayed at one of the last resorts. And generally there was always all kinds of pickled herring served as an appetizer for breakfast. But this time when we, we went up there, they had pickled salmon. Well, I made half the breakfast with the pickled salmon. It was out of this world. You know, it's funny, in all the different places that we went for vacation, the cat skills and, and the food was unbelievable. And one thing that stood out, the waiters always, whatever you ordered, and no matter how you ordered it, they always brought it to the table exact. Picture a table of 10 people ordering a different variety of food. They never wrote it down, and they came back with everything exactly the way it was. I said, boy, boy, are they really special. I, you know, I, I can't remember. This one wanted a little bit matzo balls, this one wanted a little bit without this. This one wanted mashed potatoes, this one wanted carrots. And they knew where each dish belonged. I don't think any, any other place resort could co compare to the resorts. Maybe someday it'll come back in full bloom. I hope they do. But you know, the funny part of it is, I didn't have a nerve to go behind in the kitchen and ask the maitre d' or the cook if they would let me have the recipe for pickled salmon. So I came home, how am I gonna get this? I took my pickled herring recipe and tried to adapt it to the salmon. Well, you know, after so many tries and having my sister test it and my children test it and this said a little too sweet, this a little sour, but eventually I finally conquered and I made pickled salmon to my taste and my family's taste. It's delicious. And I hope that you'll give it a chance to try. It isn't that difficult. And they sell it in appetizer stores as expensive. And it lasts. And oh, when you go over that little, little piece of salmon with the nice taste, it's, it's something wonderful. If you like pickled herring, this tastes even better. Not only that, but salmon is healthy. There's not too much salt in this. There's not too much sugar. Taste it, make it. I'm sure you'll like it. Try it. And now let's begin. The most important ingredient, of course, is salmon. And why I'm going to talk about salmon for a few uh, seconds is that it has to be fresh. And you have to have some kind of a relationship with your fishmonger or wherever you buy your fish. Tell him he's got to guarantee that it's the freshest fish salmon that he has. That's very important because the fish is actually placed into pickling uh, liquid. The pickling liquid contains vinegar. Vinegar acts like a cooking agent. So you could say that the vinegar kind of cooks the salmon. But 
similar to sushi, it has to be fresh. Now, there are many ways to buy it. The recipe calls for about a pound and a half of salmon. But, you know, sometimes salmon you see is on special. And it's, it's a wonderful fish. You can bake it. You can broil it. And I'm going to show you how. And, of course, I like to be thrifty. And I have to have things available. So I'm going to show you what I generally do. And then you, you judge what is good for you. When I see salmon is on a special and it's fresh, I go to the fisherman and say, when did you get that salmon? And generally he'll tell me, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays they come in. I say, are you sure? Take, take it, and then I say, some, go in the back and take me a whole slice out. Lady, I have it right here. No, I want you to go in the back, and I want you to get it from the other ones. So this is what I do. This happens to be a small slice. I buy the whole piece of salmon. And then, if he's a gentleman and he'll help you, I tell him, would you please take the skin off? If he does, and then will you slice it for me? And if I'm going to in one and a half to two inch slices, and then some, I leave about two slices that I can use for baking or broiling. And if he doesn't, well, have a sharp knife at home and you do it at home. And this is what happens. This is the size I cut that I need for pickling. And then, you know, a regular slice of salmon is larger. Because I only need a pound and a half of salmon for pickling, and I bought a whole slice, what am I going to do? And basically, I do with other fish, with haddock or cod. If I can get quality, and I know it's real fresh, I make it convenient for me. So I take these little freezer bags, put a one or two slices inside, zip it up and put it in the freezer and then when I want fish I thaw it out overnight in the refrigerator and then make my fish so I know I've got quality and it's fresh and I, I go to my own freezer my own store and I have it when I want it so it serves a double purpose and I have the fish to make pickling uh, uh, salmon and pickling salmon it takes about four days to pickle. But on the fourth day, as I show you, I will stir everything together and then it stays in the refrigerator for about two weeks and you have it whenever you want to eat it. It's delicious. And really and truly it's easy. You don't have to be exact with the measurements. You'll have to try it and if you have, let me know. I've already had my salmon cut in slices about one and a half to two inches wide. And this one I have already taken off the skin. And this one I want to show you how I do that. It isn't that difficult. It just takes a little time, a little practice. Have a sharp knife, a big one or a small one, whatever you're comfortable with. Take very carefully, just start it slowly like a saw, up and down until you have enough to grab. And when you have enough to grab, gently just hold it and pull. Hold it and pull. And very, very carefully, before you know it, it's all gonna be off. And you'll be ready to cut the fish in cubes. The first step is to prepare the uh, marinade, the liquid, because it has to cool. So we'll start that first and give it a chance to cool while we prepare the rest. First thing we need is a half a cup of water and three-fourths teaspoon of salt. And two-thirds cup of sugar. And then white vinegar, a cup of white vinegar. And all this has to be brought to boil. Give, I'll show you. I give it a stir and bring it to boiling point and give it a chance to cool off while we do the rest of the preparation. Now I'll have to bring this over to my stove and put it on high.
And now we're going to bring the liquid to boiling on high. And when it finishes boiling, I'm going to set it aside so it can completely cool and we can start with the next step. And now it's time for the Yiddish word of the day. Bubby, what's today's Yiddish word? Today's Yiddish word is a word that's very close to my heart. It's theater. And theater means theater. And you know, when I was growing up, my parents were poor, but somehow, I don't know how my mother managed, she always managed to have a few dollars for Yiddish theater when they came in our area. And she always took me along and my sisters, and I grew up with it, the stars and everything. I wished it came back. It was musical. It was interesting. Somehow or other, I long for it so much. And you know, the Yiddish stars of yesteryear, their children, many of them became famous actors and actresses today. As famous as you, Bobby? More than famous, <laughs> trust me. I, I don't want to mention names. I don't want to lose out on, miss out on some of them. But they know who they are, and I'm sure if you checked on their biographies, you'd see uh, when, that their parents were actually the first stars in the Yiddish set. And you know where we sat out from? Where did you sit? We used to call it the gallery. It was the highest balcony because we couldn't afford it, but we were there. Interesting. Now, one thing I'm wondering, because we've been talking about celebrities and all that, should we talk about the book? Yeah, and I have to tell, you have to know, Alvin says, Bobby, I, we want to make a book. Do you think can do, you can do it? All our fans are asking. Avram, do you realize, oh, take your time, Bobby. So he says, you can do it. So he's very patient with me. And you know, time goes by, and before you know it, the book is on its way. You can actually pre-order your book right now by going to www.bubbybook.com. What's really fascinating is the first day that this came out and that we had the pre-order start, we were actually on the kosher bestseller list. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised, you know. I, like I say, the internet is so immediate and fast that my friends and, and them, it feels like I know, know them my whole life. They're so close. So we have to thank everyone out there for helping us out, and we've, we've done our best to make sure that this book is at a reasonable cost so that everybody can afford it. It's very important to us. So if you end up pre-ordering the book, like please let us know and let your friends, family know. Who is this book perfect for, would you say? For everyone. I feel that all our uh, viewers and fans are a part of my family. And so the book has stories, anecdotes, you know, a, a little bit of Bobby in different stages. So come and join my family and read about the book and read about you included in this. In, in all honesty, we never really ever expected <laughs> that we'd be writing a book and that's actually all due to the fans going and saying, make a book already. We, we don't need to sit here and make, make a book, Book Fire Health, but because the fans really want that, because you want it, we are doing everything in our power to go and to get that book out to you. And we've learned a lot from the experience. Uh, honestly, you know something? It made me think back years and years and back. And when I think about it now and I kind of laugh and remember and say, oh, you know, it's a wonderful thing. Things that I remember that I've forgotten, they come back to you and they're so real and so true and honest. And we're talking over with my children and with my sisters and say, and we laugh and we say, oh yeah, you remember that? You remember this? Oh yeah, do you remember what Ma did, what Pa did? And it, it's fascinating to me. So I hope it'll be fascinating to you too. To all our fans all over the world, in our online universe, in our television universe, and any other way that you possibly find Feed Me Bubby that we probably don't even know about, thank you very much. This book is coming out, once again, Bubby Book. Dot com. If you'd like to email or call Bubby, use the email address and phone number listed below. We'll be right back. Oh, just one minute before I finish. You know, I'm behind in the emails, and I'm really sorry. I haven't forgotten anyone. But you know, there are only so many hours in the day, and I'll try to do catch-up. And if, if it was important, whatever the email, send it again. I'll try. I'm doing my best to see if I can catch up. It's true. We've been working very hard on this book, and it's put us really behind in just getting all those emails and phone 
calls answered, but it's given us the inspiration to continue working on the book. Anything else? No, that's the important. We'll be Just right back. be patient. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Avram. I'm Bubby. And if you enjoyed my videos, then I'm sure you'll enjoy my book. Recipe stories, and of course, enjoyable reading. www.bubbybook.com Pre-order yours today. Oh, it's really boiling. Take it off and let it cool completely, and now we'll go to the next step. I'm going to cut the salmon now in about one and a half to two inch cubes. And then I'm going to place it in the bowl. I like to use a nice clear bowl. Don't use a metal or plastic. Try and have a clear white bowl because of the vinegar and everything, it's important. And then place it in your bowl for the first layer. I cut my fish in cubes and the next step is to slice the onions. And you have a choice, you can use the yellow onions or if a little better taste, use the uh, sweet onions. And uh, get, get lots, if you like a lot of onions, it pays. And uh, slice the onions thin. I like the lot of onion, but I cut it in half. It's easier to handle. And I have them all ready. And just, I'll add these to it too. Oh, you really don't have to measure. I like large onions, so I put uh, two large onions in. And the next thing, ingredient that I need, which is very important, I need a tablespoon and one teaspoon of pickling spice. Oh, let me tell you about pickling spice that I had an experience. One time I ran short and I picked up a not so popular a brand. And what happens with the brands that are not a good brand is that the pieces are very small and as a result they stick to the salmon which makes it uncomfortable to serve and, and eating. So when you're getting pickling spice, make sure you get a good brand. See how large these pieces are? And I use five bay leaves. This helps the, the flavor. Uh, another thing too, if you don't use your spices often, what I do is I take the jar, the spices, and keep them in my freezer. This way it stays fresh and you have it available. And I've got my salmon layer in, and now I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of the spice, big spice, pickling spices, and two bay leaves, and onions on top. kind of evenly and then another layer of the salmon it's very simple to make and you can make two or three layers depending how big your large your bowl is and the rest of the spices and the bay leaf, two bay leaves, and the rest of the onions. There. And I have one bay leaf left, we'll put that in the middle. And then my vinegar and sugar liquid cooled off. Just slowly pour it all over the whole thing. There, that's it. Cover it with a plastic, place it in your refrigerator, let it stay for three days. After three days, take a large spoon, just mix it up all together so that each piece of salmon and the onions will be thoroughly uh, touched by the liquid. Place it back, leave it for another two days. It takes five days to really marinate thoroughly and it's ready to eat. If by chance you find that there are too many little, small particles of the of pickling spice on the salmon, it's very easy to take care of. Take a fork and just give the individual piece a shake in the salmon. And the 
same with the onions. And then take a strainer, strain the liquid into another bowl, and then put the salmon back. And this way you will eliminate extra pickling spice that would attach to the pieces of salmon. If you like the sour cream with the salmon, uh, it's very easy to do. However, don't do it too far in advance because it'll kind of dilute. And I start with small amounts. Take about, oh, a couple of teaspoons of the marinade. And then add the salmon, or oh, maybe about three uh, teaspoons. And then kind of stir it and mix it carefully. Because like I say, you want it to be thick. You don't want it to be too much. And when you think you have it of a good consistency, take your pieces of salmon and onion. I'll think of three pieces per serving. Or if you're going to make it for a brunch, what I do is I mix it all together and have two separate uh, dishes, one with the sour cream and one with plain. And you have to just go easy when you mix the sour cream to make sure that you don't over dilute it. I think this is about right now. And stir it very well so that it's all coated and yet it's a good heavy consistency. And then for individual plates, very simple. You've got the onion and the salmon and you've got the sour cream. And to make it a little attractive, I take one of the bay leaves, just put it on top. Okay, so and now I'm going to plate the plain one. It's a matter of choice. And figure three, four, as I said before, three, four pieces should be enough. And of course, they're always welcome to come back for seconds. And onions, depends. I like a lot of onions. There. And take another bay leaf. And for a little presentation, make it look attractive. My two kinds, one with sour cream, one with plain. Eskism today. Enjoy. Hi, Bubby. My name is Beverly, and I live in Michigan. I just got done watching a couple of your videos, and I am so excited to try to make your baked fish and potato lackeys for dinner. I love your videos. Avram, you are a wonderful grandson to do this for your Bubby. And I just have to say that I love watching every little bit of it, and I'm on your mailing list, and I got just got to see the new one on the fruit, and it's very exciting. So thank you, Bobby. You're the best. Bye-bye. This podcast is part of the Blueberry Network, where listeners and podcasters come together. Blueberry.com.